So we created this thing. It's actually an escapement for a clock driven by a rubber band. And you can think of it as the heart of a clock. This is the bit that keeps the time and powers the clock. The rest are just gears for displaying that time on the face. This is the really important bit. Now, the way it keeps time is this thing here. This is the pendulum, and it has a property called periodicity. A pendulum will swing from one max point to the second max point in a period of time. That's why periodicity. And that period is always the same, which is really cool. Only the length of the pendulum matters. The longer it is, the slower it swings, the shorter it is, the faster it swings. But as it slows down, the time taken to get from one high point on one side to the other high point on the other side remains the same. As that swings, it operates this pinion, which releases that. The gears interface to the other gears, and as long as that time is the same, it will keep good time. Pendulums weren't really the first mechanical oscillator. That would have been the Virgin Foliant system, which came up around the 13th century and became widespread. It was actually credited to a chap called Villard de Honicot in 1237, but they weren't terribly accurate, losing about 15 minutes a day. And that was until about the 16th century, with the use of the pendulum credited to Huygens, which reduced those losses to 15 seconds a day. Pendulums, they are pretty good, but they are somewhat inconvenient, especially in something like a wristwatch, and because, luckily, there are other things that have periodicity. Now, it's a problem set in all physics classes to work out the period of a weight and a spring, because they bounce up and down in the same period, much in the way, same way as a pendulum will swing. And, of course, clockmakers notice this, and if you look in a wristwatch, what you'll see is something called the balance wheel. The balance wheel is actually a weight, and it has a small spring attached to it that keeps it spinning backwards and forwards within the same period. The creation of the balance wheel is put down to Robert Hooke in 1658. He added a spring to a foliot mechanism, and that was improved by Huygens in 1674. It hasn't changed much since. It looks pretty much the same. Of course, with modern materials and techniques, it beats much quicker. A standard watch is something like 6 to 10 beats per second, but they did produce watches at 40 beats per second, which is 40 hertz. Now, that increase in speed of ticking, of course, has a dramatic effect on the accuracy. So these things are all examples of mechanical harmonic oscillators, and they were at the heart of the Tesla earthquake machine. And of course, we can build our own mechanical oscillator using this thing, and it requires a few simple parts. So of course, I went to Tinkercad and drew those up. The light blue is just a stand with a slide. The slide is needed because the advantage of these things is a higher oscillation and so greater accuracy and, of course, the ability to build your own death machine. And then the cream, which shows an adaptation to the pendulum holder. And all we really do is take the pendulum holder, put the bearing in the centre as we did before, and then attach that to our escape mechanism, which is powered by the rubber band. Once we've done that and shoved an M12 nut in there to act as a weight, then we put two tiny rubber bands around it to those notches and shove it in the rest. Like that. And that's where this comes in. Because although the advantage of this is speed and accuracy, the disadvantage, if you like, is that it needs tuning. It will oscillate according to the weight that's on here and the elasticity of the springs. We're using rubber bands as the springs, and it will oscillate at its own resonant frequency, which might not be the one you want. So you can change that frequency by changing the amount of elasticity on the spring or changing the weight or doing both until you get the rate of oscillation that you actually want. The way we change the elasticity of these rubber bands is by sliding that slide backwards and forwards to either stretch them or not. So on the slide, we have these long arms, and we can raise or lower the rubber bands. That's because as we add weight to the back, what it'll do is pull it downward. The rubber bands will help pull it back upwards to keep this in a straight line. And then we can slide it in and out to change the tension on the rubber bands. 
The other thing we need to do is play around with these weights here. It'll oscillate at whatever frequency it's going to oscillate natural to the system. We want to control that oscillation so we get a good amount of click here at the right time for us to be able to use. It depends what you're going to gear this at to what you want to use, but I'm going to do it quite slowly later on, and so I want something quite slow, and that means I'm going to have to add a lot of weight and change the tension in this until that gets to be the right click. And I warn you, that is a faff on. And that's the problem with this design. It does take a bit of mucking about. When you look at balance wheels, you'll see drill holes in them, weights added, because a lot of work has been done to balance everything to get it to the right frequency. And that's what we're doing here by adding weights, raising or stretching the rubber bands. But it's ready now, and all we have to do is give it a few winds, and then we can see if it oscillates. So, I use neodymium magnets as the weights because they're easy to stick on and change the weight. And of course, rubber bands as the springs, and of course, rubber band from our rubber band motor as the power source. Now, the lights are on, so you can tell it took most of my Sunday to get those oscillations right. And uh, clearly, I'm not a particularly interesting guy that I spent the Sunday afternoon doing that. But. The principles that cover a harmonic mechanical oscillator are the same principles that cover an electronic oscillator. Because, of course, these things lost out when quartz came along. When you have an electronic oscillator, of course, you can make it very much smaller. But the principles are the same, and I thought you would like to see a mechanical oscillator built from our rubber band motor that maybe we could turn into an earthquake machine. Who knows? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.